Hey what's up and welcome back this is the Procon Geek and in today's video we're going to be continuing with the Procon Geek Slab Detailing 101 getting preview with slab detailing in short and concise lessons and in today's video we're going to be looking at the shape codes used when it comes to detailing slabs using the sands or PS modules so without wasting too much time let's get right into the video. Okay, so what's up and welcome back. So first things first, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already and also leave a notification. Oh no, no, no. I mean, click on the notifications bell, then leave a like and a comment. And once you are done, just continue with me as we get started with this video. So in today's video, we're looking at the shape codes used when it comes to detailing of slabs. So I already have a video that I told you some of the basic shape codes that are used in different elements but I think it's now high time that we go or we focus more on slabs and see what are the actual shape codes that you need to use and where exactly they need to be used because where each shape code is used is dependent on its placing or the position it is needed in the slab. So without wasting too much time let's first look at what shape code is used when you need to take care of the bending moment that occurs at mid span. So what I have on the screen is a slab that you can see. So the red line obviously indicates the edges of the slab. So right, so we have, uh, I think it's 444. So it's a 16 by 16 slab with how many panels? One, two, three, four. So with 16 panels as well. Each panel measuring four meters by four meters. So it's going definitely going to be a continuous slab. And the gray lines just indicate the mid lines or the mid points where you would normally have your support or you would have your beams okay so at for example where you see this blue line we're just going to assume this is the support so in order for us to understand the different shape codes that are used in slabs so the first shape code that we need to look at is the one that is used when you need to cater for the bending moment occurring at the mid span so that is going to be represented in the first row right here in the first four columns so at the mid span you normally use shape code 20. So if you go to, this is program, remember we're using program 3.1, license provided by program software consultants, so shout out to them. If you go to rebar and then say bar, the different shape codes that you can use, but one thing that you will notice is in sense 282, sense 28004, BS and BS, right? Except for BS866-2005 and shape code 99, right? What you'll find is, Shape code 20 is common and most people, especially in developed countries, they're still using shape code 20, they're still using BS4466, which is from 1989. And most countries that use the SANS in Africa are still using SANS 282 from 2002. So the street bar is basically just shape code 20. So this is the bar that you will provide at the mid span, right, to cater for the moment or the bending moment occurring at mid span. And the best thing what they normally do is they want you to have your bars alternating and staggered as this. As you can see, this is 950, 800, 600, 600, 800, 950. This is basically just curtailment, but we are going to look at curtailment much later in this series. And I think that is what we're going to be looking at at the bottom. But for now, what I just want you to remember is that at the mid span, you use shape code 20. So in the notes, whenever you open this, just open it and remember at the mid span, you will likely use shape code 20, staggered as shown. But for how you stagger it, we're going to look at that in the other series where we're looking at curtailment of bars. So the other important thing that you would want to note is that this bl blue bars that I hashed, these are not top bars, but what I just want to do is splices. So sometimes you need to have splices which join the bars from one span to the other span in case the lip length for these two bars is not adequate. Just like in this point, it was not adequate, so we need to provide splices. So you only splice if, splice if necessary, but the lip length, if it's adequate, it's adequate. You don't need splices. That's why they're in blue and they're dashed. Okay, so the next thing after we've dealt with the mid or the bending moment of carrying the mid span, the next thing that you'd want to do is crack control and shear control at the bottom layer but at the edges and what i've said is you use shape code 37 so to illustrate that what i did is i went to the second row and put that there and you even see the blue lines in this case i said code 20 splice if necessary so as you see what i'm referring to as code 37 is this hooked bar 
So at the edges, at the very edges, you need to provide shape code 37. But then you also provide it alternating with shape code 20 because this one will be taking care of the bending moment or carrying at the midst because yes, this is at the edges, but then you still have a mid span there. So the reason why we provide shape code 37, let me just go to rebar and then go to bar is, as you can see, shape code 37 has two legs, A, which is A and B. So the reason for this leg is, is just to cater for the shear. It will also prevent cracks to okay at the edges. But you will see more of this when we start looking at the curtailment roots. But just remember at the edges, you have shape code 37 alternating with shape code 20. And you also have splices if they are necessary. Okay, now that we have looked at number two, the third thing that we need to look at is three, the Hogan moment at the top of supports. This is at internal support. So I think I forgot to say at internal supports, but it is at internal supports. So in this case, you can either use shape code 20 or shape code 43. Now, why am I saying you can either use? The reason is, and let me show you in the third row. This is the third row, right? This is what we're going for Hogan moment at the top of the supports at internal. So assuming you're going to use laces and the other one assumes you're not going to use laces. So you use shape code 43 when you're not going to use laces because the reason is you're going to have these bars and then they will anchor to the ground. So this is the leg that will be supported at the bottom so that your bars, because let's face it, where will your bars suspend if they do not have stews? So when you don't have stews, you use shape code 43. Let's just use rebar, go to bar and let's show you this is shape code 43. So this this legs will be what will be holding your bars in the A or will be holding your bar so that they can go to the top layer. So what this just means is we're assuming there are no laces. But where we're assuming there are laces, laces are just bars that are not really necessary but are just holding the other bars such that these ones can then hold on to the other bars as well which are going to be at the corner or at the external edges which we're going to look at soon. But in the case where you are not going to be using laces, all you have to do is to provide shape code 20, which will then be tied to these laces, tied to this shape code 20 bars, tied to these laces, tied to the shape code 20 bars, then tied to these laces, which will then in the end be tied to the other bars that we see at the bottom, which I'm going to talk about later on. So just remember for the Hogan moment that is at the top of internal supports, you either provide shape code 43 or you're going to use shape code 20. Personally, I use shape code 20 with the laces because shape code 43 is a bit tricky. And normally what you want to do is you want to provide steel on the entire mat and you don't want to have any areas that do not have steel, such as when you start using shape code 43 and also shape code 42 in the fourth position where we are going to be looking at the walking moment and torsion and shear control at external supports where you use either shape code 38 or shape code 42. So yes. You use either shape code 38 or shape code 42 for the Hogan moment and torsion and shape control at external supports. Let's look at shape code 42 first. So this is what shape code 42 will look like. So as you can now already see, this is what will be taking care of the torsion. And this part of the bar is just there to support the bar or prop it up so that it's able to be supported. Let me just put some construction lines because when you have construction lines, let me just do that. Say LX, assuming this is your slab, let me just put it much closer to, as you can see, this is the part that will be holding the bar at the bottom, assuming the cover, obviously it will be sitting on the spaces and then they will be covered at the top, but this is how it will be resting at the bar. So this is the reason why, because this will be propping itself up because this one cannot prop up. So this is the leg that will prop up the bar. But in the case where you want to use shape code 38, this is what shape code 38 will be like. And as you can see, it's sort of a U bar. So it also has a leg that props it up. So just remember, you can either use shape code 42 or shape code 38 when it comes to the edges. And the other thing that you need to see is, is you can see there's lots and lots of distances, but this are dependent on the distance or the span of your step. In this case, we had four meters, four meters, four meters. That's why most of them are the same. And each of them have different values. That's why the other is 600, 800, 600, 1,200. All of these come from somewhere. And that is what we need to look at when it comes to Ketelman of Steel. But for this video, all we wanted to do was look at the shape codes that are used in snaps for different purposes and also depending on the position in the snap where you need to put it. So just remember for the other direction, it's going to be the same. All you need to do is just rotate it by 90 degrees 
and you're able to cover for the other direction because I know we covered for one direction and you may start asking me what about the other direction but don't worry about that for now just remember all you need to do is have your bars in this position with this shape code and you are done so we're going to wrap the video here and in the next video we're going to be continue with the curtailment of steel seeing why it's important and what you should preferably do before we lost but not least conclude this series as we look at the curtailment rules from bs8110 and sub0144 so until next time thank you very much for watching subscribe to the channel license provided by procom shout out to them and i'll see you in the next video